welcome back to our cottage garden in Somerset. Uh, it's the end of June and today we're going to be doing a big harvest in our vegetable garden. We've got a lot of things that we need to pull out. We've got some elephant garlic, some uh, regular garlic, we've got onions, peas, possibly some other things. So I'm going to go and grab my gloves from the shed and then let's head up to the vegetable garden together. Our soft fruits are almost ready as well. So we've got blueberries, raspberries, and plenty of strawberries. Uh, we've just got the first few raspberries ready, so I'm not gonna take loads and put them in the basket, but I'm just gonna grab a few off and show them to you. And they are really tasty. Sometimes they're a bit tangy uh, and they, we get a few kind of odd ones at the beginning and then we'll get most of them in one go, possibly in the next week. Those are really tasty. Look forward to getting some more of those next week. Excuse the state of the long grass around our raised beds. Um, we were gonna strim it, but our strimmers run out of petrol, so everything's a little bit overgrown up here. But I'm surrounded by things that are ready to harvest. So we've got our Egyptian walking onions in the bed in front of me. And then behind me, we've got our elephant garlic. And then we've also got some garlic, which is early purple white. Um, the early purple white garlic looks like it's got a little bit of rust. So the scapes have just appeared. Um, in any other year, I would take the scapes now and leave the garlic a little bit longer because it doesn't look quite, um, I feel like it hasn't had long enough in there, but um, we're going to pull that up just because it's got rust. And then um, the elephant garlic you can see behind me, that's ready to come out. We took the scapes off probably about three weeks ago. It was quite a while ago. And now the leaves have started to go yellow. So that should be ready to come out. Um, I'm really excited to see this. We've never grown elephant garlic before. Um, it looks the same as regular garlic, but as you'll see when we get it out of the ground, it should be much bigger and it has a milder flavor so you can use more of it while you're cooking. So um, let's get set up to pull those out of the ground. Okay, the ground was a lot more compacted than I thought, so I'm gonna go in with a spade. I've just got to be careful that I don't stab the bulb by accident and also that I don't get in the way of this frame. Please, yes. Wow, that's huge. I think I did stab that one slightly. So I must have gone in too close to the bulb, but um, we'll know for next time. We can eat that one straight away. Yeah, so we'll eat this one straight away, um, which I believe is called green garlic. And then when you dry it, it's just called garlic. That's an amazing size though, but it just goes to show I did um, stab into the bulb a bit. I'm going to try and get this one out without damaging the sweet peas that I've planted next to it, but um, might be a little bit difficult. Obviously this is not ideal, um, but I would like to leave it in if I can and not damage the sweet peas. So let's come a bit further back. There we go. That's a good one. That's huge, look at the size of that, amazing. And there is a slug in there, I'm gonna pull that out. There we go. And these should be able to store until autumn when we want to plant any back again. So um, in the autumn time, the ones we've saved, we will plant the individual cloves back into the soil and repeat the process again. And it should mean if we can keep them until then that we never need to buy garlic again. <laughs> That's amazing, absolutely huge. That one's slightly smaller, but still massive, really good shape and luckily I didn't puncture it. And that one's also had some children. <laughs> we have it, that's our elephant garlic harvest. Really pleased with that. Unfortunately, I did stab two, so we're gonna eat those sooner rather than later. But the rest of them, we're gonna hang up to dry and then store some of them. We'll be replanted again in autumn, so stay tuned for that and make sure you give us a follow if you'd like to see us do that later in the year. Next, we've got our early purple white garlic. I'm gonna try and get this out with a trowel rather than a spade because it's a bit smaller. Let's see how we go. So we do have a few scapes on these, which I'm gonna take off first. They must have appeared recently because um, I have been checking and I haven't seen any. Um, and I was a bit worried because I knew that we needed to get the garlic out soon because of the rust. Um, so these scapes are really delicious. If you pan fry them, I usually turn them into a pesto or fry them and have them on toast with some egg. Looks like all but two have scapes, so that's pretty good going. And I'm hoping that this garlic is ready to come out of the ground now, um, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's a bit on the smaller side. The um, shoots look tiny, so let's see 
Here's a lovely bunch of scapes. <laughs> it's baby. That's really tiny. Um, still usable, but it looks like maybe there's about six cloves on there. Would have been much better if it had got a bit bigger, um, but I just don't want to leave these in the ground now that they're going rusty. So I'm going to pull the rest of them out and hopefully we'll get a few more bigger ones. But if not, we'll probably end up drying all of these to replant again in the autumn. There we go, um, that's our early purple white garlic harvested. A little bit disappointing this year, very small. Uh, we had about three or four casualties and we didn't have that many bulbs in there to begin with. So I think I will dry these and I will probably use all of them um, to plant next year because ideally we'd like to have a lot more plants than we had this year. Uh, same with the elephant garlic, we wanted to grow a lot more of that, um, but we only had two full bulbs to go off. Um, so now we've, um, I don't know how many we pulled up, maybe about 12. Um, we'll dry most of those and get those planted in the autumn. Next, I'm going to pull up a walking onion from the ground, and this will be the first time I've pulled one out, but they look like they're ready to come out. Um, they don't store particularly well. I just want to have a look um, and see what they taste like, so let's go. So these are walking onions, and these are a really amazing plant. I've always grown onions from seeds, and when I realized how much easier it was growing these, um, I ordered some. So basically, you can eat these bulbules on, bulbules on the top, if you don't want to eat them, you can plant them and they'll become a new onion. You can eat this like it's a spring onion. And then you can also dig out the bulb from under the ground and it should be like a larger sort of red onion. I haven't tried one yet, so I want to get one out just to try them. Um, but they're not the sort of thing that you'd harvest all in one go because I've heard that they don't store very well. Um, although I'd love to give it a try, see how long we can store them for. So I'm just going to pull one out and we can see what they look like. Um, and I'm hoping that I never need to grow onions from seed again. <laughs> But the criticism of these as a plant is that um, as far as onions go, they are quite small. Um, so you can see there, it's more like the size of a shallot um, rather than an onion. And people say it's not worth the energy. Um, but I think that's amazing. I will use all of this plant um, and I, I will replant some of these uh, bulbules from the top as well. So I'll definitely bring that one in to try. Now we're in the polytunnel. It is really warm in here, so I'm going to try and be quick. We're going to be harvesting these peas because the plants have started to go over and I will be sowing a new lot after this. Um, I won't sow them directly into the polytunnel. I'll do it in the shed because the mice eat them uh, when they're seedlings. And then I will transplant them and put them somewhere else in the tunnel. Um, so let's go. I always make sure I've got peas growing um, as often as I can just because they get their nutrients from the air. Um, so they're a good nitrogen fixer for the soil so they don't deplete it. And then um, the other plants should get a few more, um, get a bit more nourishment. This is actually half of the peas. Um, I harvested half of them three days ago. So we've been having those in pasta and risotto for dinner the last couple of days. Uh, no doubt we'll do the same again to get through these. Um, they won't keep too long, but I do save some to plant again. So I'll let some of them dry out and then use those for my ne next batch that I'm sowing. They're a really easy plant to grow. Um, a good one if you're starting out and looking for something that's going to give you a bit of a confidence boost. Um, and in the future, I'd like to get a few more varieties. I've seen a really nice heritage variety of pea that has um, pink and white flowers. These ones just have white flowers. Um, I'm not sure of the name of the variety, but I think the original seed packet just came from B&Q. Um, and we've been harvesting our own, uh, saving the seeds each year. So um, they're all from that original variety, but I don't know what the name is. So there we go, that's our pea harvest. Um, and you may also notice in the polytunnel lab, we've had it plumbed in. We do try and water the, the polytunnel with rainwater. So we've got some water butts around the garden, but when it's really dry, we do run out. So now we've got a tap at the back there and a hose at the front, which is gonna be a game changer because it's been a bit of a nightmare this year trying to keep the polytunnel watered. Uh, we do not water that often because we use a thick layer of mulch every year and that helps to keep the moisture in the soil, which means you water less. Um, but we do still need to water maybe once a week, once every 10 days. Um, so that's going to be really helpful for that. Um, but there you go, there's our peas. You can see some of them are a bit dry. Um, I'll see if those are edible or not, but if they're not, I will use them to replant. And then there's one more thing I want to harvest. So let's go back to the veg garden. So we're probably gonna have risotto for dinner tonight. Um, we've got a lot of peas. I'm gonna grab some perennial kale to go in the risotto as well. I'm just gonna take a few leaves. Oops. I wasn't sure whether I was gonna to need to net over this kale and I'm still not entirely sure um, because of the cabbage butterflies. Um, 
it's quite a strong and sturdy plant, so I think it probably will survive um, if they do take a liking to it, but we'll see. I did build a sort of frame over the top in case I need to net it, although the kale has come very far this way, I might need to extend the cage slightly. Um, but we're ready if we need to. But it's nice to have a few butterflies in the garden and I don't mind if a bit of this is a sacrificial plant. We do have more and I've taken loads of cuttings of it as well. So there you go, that's our first big harvest of the year. Really happy with the elephant garlic, somewhat happy with the early purple white garlic, um, but overall amazing. I'm gonna get to work drying these now, so I will bunch them up and hang them in the roof of my shed and we'll leave those just to dry and then they will store for a lot longer. Um, the ones that we damaged, we'll take into the house and we'll eat them as green garlic. And I've also picked a few chamomile flowers to make a cup of tea with as well. So thanks so much for watching. If you've enjoyed today's video, please subscribe and we will keep you updated with our cottage garden and vegetable garden progress.